I want to welcome you to the video portion of the Prodigal Son podcast. You know, we do this video every week to just hit the high spots on what we're doing on the podcast during the week. You know, this comes out on Tuesday, and we've already started the teaching. We're, we're, we're finishing up in Romans 8. We'll be in Romans 8 this week, and and we were in Romans 8 last week, and and it, oh, it's been a it's been such a blessing to be able to to give you the truths that Paul wrote down in Romans to for for the people that that he was talking to, and then apply it, be able to to tell you that you can apply that to our life, to your life, because I know I apply it to mine. It it thrills me to be able to read these this truth in God's Word and be able to know and understand that it's mine that it is mine and and God wants me to know that I can count on it you know we do this podcast five days a week and then I will put my pastor's message on it on Sunday we do this for a reason we do this to to reach out to the world to show them and and to help them to understand that God loves them he cares for them and he wants more than anything to 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 change their life through his love and his mercy and his grace and through the truth in his word. And I want to just I want to publicly thank all the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry to help us do what we're commissioned by God to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. I thank God for the ability and the means to be able to do this video, these podcasts, and to hear what, what, what people are saying, saying uh, about what God's Word is doing in their lives. Oh, it thrills me. You know, last month, we had the the best month that we've ever had in this ministry. We had more downloads last month than ever before, and I don't know how many how many uh, how many times the the podcast got streamed, but we had an outstanding amount of of downloads and the streams. I don't think they they count uh, towards our statistics, but the the downloads were unreal. So I just thank God for that. I pray, I pray that 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 more people gets to hear what this what this channel is all about, what this podcast is all about, and it's showing the the love that God has for every person that walks the face of this earth. Glory to God. Let me let me get started here on on our uh just hitting the high spots, I'm going to tell you, just uh, overseeing or, or going over what we're going to go over this week in, in the, on the podcast. We're starting in the 37th verse of Romans. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now I want to read that in the, in the New Living Translation. Let me move it up here to this other screen so I don't have to stay bent over and read it. Uh, the third, starting with the 37th verse in the New Living Translation. It says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I, and I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries for t about tomorrow. Even the powers of hell, not even the powers of hell, can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Now that's what we want to talk about today is, is overwhelming victory is ours. Nothing can separate us from God being for us. Nothing can separate us from his love. You know, I, I, I finished up the, the, the eighth chapter of Romans and, and then I backed up and went back into the, to the chapter because I, I just couldn't, I guess I couldn't get enough of just how much God is for us and just how much he wants to, to be part of our lives and, and to, 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 to lead us and, and to help us. And there's a lot of people in this world don't realize that. I, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. There is a lot of people in this world that do not realize that God is for them. He, they've been raised in religion and, and raised in, in religious, around religious people that just, they, they go out of their way to be hard on people. Look, if God's not going to be hard on you, I sure ain't going to be hard on you. And, and that's what this whole podcast is all about. Is, 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 it's named the prodigal son. It's named that for a reason. You know, I read that verse years ago, those verses in Luke 15, 11 through 24. I read those and, and realized that, that all the, the junk, the religious junk that had been thrown at me all the years of my life were man. But they were man's. Because God, the, the, the picture of the Father in Luke 15 was a picture of just how much he loved me and just how much he cared for me and just how much he is willing to forgive me and restore me. And when I realized that, this last part of the 8th chapter of Romans came alive to me. It came alive to me. Why? Because nothing, nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. No, I, he wants overwhelming victory for us in our lives. He wants us to, to walk through this life strong, victorious, blessed, healthy, with nothing, no problem that comes against us ever deterring us from doing what we are set here on this earth to do. As Christians, we are put here on this earth to be a light for people to see God in us. You know, I, I hear a lot of people talk about it. So, you know, so the, the Christians today are, 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 are probably only, the only Bible that a lot of people will ever read. And, and when, when, you put it in that pers when you put it in that perspective, you put it in a perspective of, of like, wow, you know, if they're looking at me, what are they seeing? What are they, what are they, uh, are they seeing a triumphant Christian, a strong Christian, a loving Christian? Or are they seeing a religious person that just wants to, you know, throw out a bunch of rules and regulations and, and condemn somebody for not following those rules? Look, like I said, if God's not going to uh, give you a hard time, I ain't, I ain't here to give you a hard time. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing in this world can separate you from the love that God has for you. There's nothing in this world that can separate you from the overwhelming victory that you can have through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I want you to know that. Well, I want you to know and understand that, that we are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors, not through our own strength, not, not through our own ability, not through anything that uh, anything that that can uh, that we can muster up, but through Him, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, we'll never be good enough and on our own, but we we were we were set free, set free through the truth. In God's word. Now, I want to, the Lord just gave me this, and I want to. I want to follow His leading. Uh, this is not in the podcast. This is just something that the, the that He wanted me to uh, to tell you. I want. I want to read this to you. It's First Peter one eighteen. If I can get to it, it says, "For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, for your vain conversation." received by traditions from your father, 
but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. In other words, look, God gave heaven's best. He gave his own son as a ransom paid for our sins to give us the ability to, to never be conquered, but be more than conquerors through him that loved us and come to know and understand that he loved us enough to give heaven's best for us. And, 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 and when, when he gave heaven's best, he, he justified us in doing it, in, 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 li in being able to stand and, and live and be strong in what he has done. Oh, it thrills me to, do, to, to be able to, to tell you these truths and to do these podcasts to help you to be lifted up and be strengthened. And in, in not in me, not in my what I'm telling you or, or what I'm doing in this podcast, but through the truth in his word. We're more than conquerors. You, there, you got more than you need to overcome anything that comes against you. But you've got you first got to realize who you are in Jesus Christ. You got to realize that nothing can separate you from His love. If you if you mess up and you you fall short, you you sin, you just fall flat of your face. Sometimes I want you to understand and know that God is willing and He is able to forgive you. All you got to do is ask Him. First John one and nine. Let's, let let me read that. 1 John 1 and 9, I want to read it. I don't want to uh, quote it. I don't want to mess it up. 1 John 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that's the, that's the born-again Christians that have, have screwed up, have sinned. That, that whole book is, is written to born-again Christians. And what did he say? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, guess what? If he's going he, to give born-again people that, that right, he's going to give you that right if you're not born again. If you've never been born again, he wants you to come to him. He wants you to realize and understand that he's for you, not against you. I'm telling you, religion has got this, got this whole world screwed up. Cause I, I, I promise you, if God, if if God was able to to, uh, well, I, I'm gonna rephrase that. If we were able to get out to the world, what what I have done my dead level best for the last going on three years. To do, and that's to, to to provoke people to see and understand that God's for them, not against them, and that He loves them. And 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 if we're able to 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 teach the world the love that God has for them, religion would melt. It wouldn't it, it wouldn't exist anymore. But religions ran rampant for the last eighty hundred years, and 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 just done its dead level best to destroy anybody that's ever stood up and and started believing what God says. See, that's that's the thing. You know, when the, the moment you start doing good and you slip up and you sin, mark my word, there'll be somebody say, Oh, what about oh, what about this over here? What about that over there? And you may tell you what to tell them, I confess my sins. And God is faithful and just to forgive, you, to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Tell them that. Why? Because God said that. And, and when you do that, you can, the more you do that, the more you'll come to realize that nothing in this world, absolutely nothing in this world, will separate you, can separate you from God's love. God wants you to know that. He wants you to understand that. He wants you to realize that that there ain't nothing in this world can separate you from him but you and he and and the decisions that you make. 
the decisions that 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 you make to the to decide whether or not you're going to believe him believe him today i promise you he wants you to he wants you to be to to come to the conclusion that you're going to stand on his word regardless of what people say and when you do that it'll change your life it'll change your life and you'll come to realize that there ain't nothing that, that can come against you. Why? Because you're more than a conqueror. And nothing in this world can separate you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Now I want to back up a little bit to the uh, the 28th, chap the 28th verse. Romans 8 and 28. And, and and this goes right along with it, what we've been talking about. And, and I want you to realize this and understand this. It says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Or to His purpose for them, rather. For those, Let me read that again. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Now, I want, I want to ask you something today. Do you love God? Are you delighting yourself in Him? I'm, I want to go back and, and, and read uh, Psalms, the 37th chapter, and I'm trying to use this computer more than I do my... Uh, my iPad and stuff, because my iPad it it feeds back, and I don't like the that that uh, popping sound that it makes on the audio. It says, "Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desire." The King James version said, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the the desires of your heart." And and I, that's what I'm going to ask you today: Are you receiving the desires of your heart? Are you receiving what God has for you? Because if you're delighting yourself in Him, you love Him. Not a doubt in my mind that, that I, I don't delight myself in something that I don't care a whole lot about. And, and if I don't love something, I'm not going to pay that much attention to it. But I found out over the years that, that the more that I consume of God's word and what he says to me for me and about me the more I love him and the more I realize that he loves me and that he's for me and ain't nothing that come can, can, can come against me that he ain't gonna turn to good now, I can't help but think about about Joseph in the 50th chapter of, of Genesis when it, when he talked about him when his brothers were you know they were they were worried they were worried he said, you know, they told him, said, you know, the, our father's dead, and, and you go back and read the 50th chapter of Genesis. And, and it, it talks about, you know, their, their uh, father died, and, and Joseph was, was ruler, second in command over Egypt, and his brothers thought, now he's going to have revenge on us. Our father is gone. But what did he do? What did he do? He told them, he said, what you meant for... For evil, God meant it for good to save many people alive, including them, and and that's what I'm talking. That's just a perfect example of 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 uh, God making sure that all things work to the good of them that love Him. Joseph loved Him. Joseph loved God, and 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 that's what I want you to understand today. That if you love Him, there ain't nothing in this world that He won't do for you. There ain't nothing in this world that he won't make come to pass in your life if you'll delight yourself in him. Delight yourself in him, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, I want to I wanna, I wanna back up again in the, the eighth chapter, and just let me look at it in the, in the uh, New Living Translation. The sixth verse, Romans 8 and 6. Now it says, So letting your sinful nature control your, minds, your mind leads to death, 
but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Now let me let me read that in the King James Version, cause it's it's that good in the King James Version. Well, this computer, there it is. It says, for, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, I've got a question for you today. Have you found peace in your life? Better yet, do you know anybody that has peace in their life? See, there, there's a lot of Christians in this world that lives way below their standards that God has set for them. They don't have peace. They don't have strength. They don't have victory. Why? You say, well, why is that? Why don't God's people live strong and victorious throughout their entire life without a hitch coming against them? I'm going to just be honest with you. It's because the lack of God's word in their life. And what word is there, they don't have to believe it. I have determined in my heart that I'm going to do, if I do anything in my life, I'm going to believe what God's word says. I'm going to stand on what God's word says. I'm going to believe it. And when I start believing what God's word says, I'll start I'll start coming to understand that I'm more than a conqueror through him. That, that there ain't nothing in this world can separate me from the love of God. And, and to be, for me to be carnally minded is an impossibility in my life. Why? Because I don't want to be that way anymore. Because I want peace in my life. Peace in my heart. Peace that, 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 that passes all understanding. That peace that only God can give. And in the 8th chapter of Romans, there is so much, so much that we, can, we could look at and, and never understand uh, the depth of it. Well, if, you, if, you, if you look and, and, and try to see in your life what God is wanting for you and, and realizing that, my God, it's in, you, it's in His Word. Everything that God wants for you is in His Word. And all you have to do is get in His Word and receive it. Receive what God has for you. I want to go back to the first, first verse of Romans 8. It says, There is therefore now... Now this is the key. This is a very large key of living a strong, victorious Christian life is realizing what this verse is saying. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Coming to realize, me coming to realize that I, I wasn't condemned anymore for my sin and mistakes because Jesus died on the cross to free me from that condemnation and shame. When I come to understand that, it set me free. It set me, it set me upon a rock that, that my goodness, I, I can't be, I, uh, it just that rock's not going to go anywhere. It, it, it has given me a strength uh, that, that I can't put in words a lot of times. Coming to understand that the condemnation that Satan once held over me is gone. Why? Because of that verse right there. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now what were we saying down there about not to be carnally minded? To be carnally minded is death, but be spiritually minded to walk after the Spirit <laughs> to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Peace. I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to find that in a, a, a pill bottle or in alcohol or in a relationship 
with uh, I, I'm telling you with somebody here on this earth a relation let me clarify that with a relationship with somebody here on this earth but if you'll accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and come to understand these truths that are in Romans 8 it'll set you free it'll set you free it'll change your life the desires that you once had in your life will completely change if you will come to understand and to know the love that God has for you. He wants you to know that. He wants you to, to realize just how much He loves you. I can't, get, I can't say that enough on this podcast because that's what the world is lacking, and that is the knowledge of God's love, the knowledge that, that He loves them regardless, regardless of what they're doing. He still loves you. And he, all he wants you to do is to do what that, that boy did, that, that son in the prodigal son story. That prodigal son, what did he do? He turned from what he was doing. He went home and repented of it. He said, Father, forgive me. Forgive him. I, I, he, he said it, forgive me. I, 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 I've sinned against you and against heaven. And, 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 and the father stopped him. He stopped him. What did he do to, for him? He restored him. He restored him to where he had left from. Now I want to ask you a question today. Are you away from God? Are you born again, but yet you're, you're you know, way off in another land somewhere doing your own thing, knowing that, knowing that what you're doing is wrong? Knowing that you need to be at home with your father, hey, the easiest thing in the world to do is to come home to him. First John 1 and 9 said it. said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's all it takes to come back to God. And if you've never been born again, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. The easiest thing. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. If you've never been born again, make today the day that you allow Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior that you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your life and cleanse you from things that you couldn't cleanse yourself of. I, I, I hear people all the time talking about it. One of these days I'm going to get straightened out and God's going to save me. Well, don't get the cart before the horse. Don't try to straighten yourself out before you come to God. Come to God and let Him see you born into the family of God through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. Let him save you, and then he'll clean you up. Then he'll straighten you out. Oh, I thank God for people that are realizing that they need God more than they need anything else in this world. Be born again today. Be born again today. Allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you. And then you can become more than a conqueror through Him, through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, then you can come to realize that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Then you can come to realize and understand that to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And God's got that for you. All you got to do is get in His Word. Get in His Word and let Him feed you with His Word and strengthen your heart and your, your spirit, man, and your mind through the truth in God's Word. Be born again today. If you're not born again, be born again. And if you are born again and you're just away from Him, confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if you're where you're, where you're supposed to be with God, get in His Word and let Him strengthen you and feed you and guide you and direct you in every aspect of your life. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. 
Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. You know, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need Him to do in your life. Send me a prayer request. If you've got prayer requests and in, 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 if you need prayer, send me your prayer request. We want to hear from you. I want to send you scriptures that you can that you can stand on, that I will stand on with you and agree with you according to those prayer requests, to see those prayer requests answered according to God's Word. Glory to God. I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. I, I promise you, you are helping us touch thousands, thousands every month for the glory and the honor of of the Lord Jesus Christ for God's glory to see seeing people's lives changed all over this world. Like I said, we had a we had a record month last month, and and I'm looking forward to a record month this month. And it's all through the help that you're sending us through this ministry through these podcasts. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark ten twenty nine and thirty over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Hey, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom. Sow into this ministry today, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his love and his word away free of charge to anybody that will listen. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the prodigal Son. 